Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. I suppose he's in the back room. This is the day he puts out the Hooterville World Guardian. I didn't want to bother him. Well, he runs this store. You got a right to be waited on. I know, but yelling for him seems kind of rude. You don't have to yell. There's a much subtler way to get him to come out here. Oh? Watch. Jones, put those cookies back. <laughs> it does work. Better than the burglar alarm. <laughs> What's this? I'm just giving Wendell here the lowdown on him. Hey, what kind of headline is that? Well, Doc Stewart announced his new associate. Hmm, looks like you're giving in to the opposition. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but Doc Stewart has taken on Dr. Craig as his new associate. You're blabbing it all over the valley with this headline. Oh, for Pete's <laughs> sake, Joe. As editor, it's my obligation to print the news. You make it look like an established fact that this woman doctor is going to stay in the valley. Well, I haven't heard anything to the contrary. How about that meeting we had the other night? I thought we all agreed to make a pact not to give in till Doc Stewart replaced her. Right, Wendell? Uh, yes, that's right, I think. Oh, oh, Wendell, how do you feel about having a woman doctor? Well, I do think we ought to give and take a little. Be fair about it. You mean you'd actually go to a woman doctor? Maybe, maybe not. I'm kind of yes and no about it. Sometimes I lead one way and the other way at other times. Wendell, we're trying to get a straight answer. Now, what would you do if we had a woman doctor? Well, I'll tell you. You do that. I've made up my mind not to get sick while she's here. <laughs> Sam, about that news item, give it as little importance as you have to. And bury that article in the back of the paper and get another headline. Well, that's just a point. An eye-catching headline ain't too easy to come by. I've got one here, but it don't amount to much. Ben Miller strikes gold. Ben Miller strikes gold? Well, that's a sensational headline. Yeah, but when you get into the meat of the story, you discover that Ben Miller struck Harry Gold at the lodge meeting Friday night. <laughs> uh, details do hurt it a little. <laughs> Now, but here's another one I could use. Newt Kiley finds frog in pitcher of buttermilk. Well, I don't see anything newsworthy about that. Well, the newsworthy part of it is, when he drank the buttermilk, he couldn't find the frog anymore. <laughs> I guess that's why he was hopping up and down the railroad track the other day. <laughs> well, you do as you like, Sam. I'd lay off that lady doctor. Give her as little publicity as possible. Okay, Joe. Sam. Yeah? I want it understood between the three of us that right here and now we'll make a pact not to weaken. We'll hold her ground against this Dr. Craig until she moves out of the valley. Yeah, but Joe, she may try to sweet talk us, use women's wiles. Oh, dear. Yeah, but we ain't going to fall for it. We're going to completely ignore her. Give her the old freeze. Agreed? Agreed. Wendell? What if she talks to me? Now, don't say a word. Just say, hmm. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. The old freeze. Well, I better go change this headline. Go! Oh! See how it works, Wendell? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> what do you think, Doctor? Well, I'm worried. Worried about what? About myself. This baby's so healthy, I'll never have any business. <laughs> I'll take her. It's time for a nap. Honey, uh, let me put her down. Uh, darling, do you really want to try? Yes. Yes, I do. It's a very good thing for the father to take a hand in the baby's care. Ow! 
Oh, I knew it. Oh, sweetheart, don't cry. She hates me. <laughs> maybe I'd better do it. No, no, wait a minute. Does this happen very often? Every time. Oh, I see. Steve, watch out! What? What's, what's the matter? Oh, nothing now. Hey, honey, she stopped crying. What happened? He's holding her the way she wants to be held. You see, Steve, she's a human being, not a piece of rare china. And she's come into a pretty awesome world, and the one thing she wants more than anything is security. Well, yeah, well, I was just afraid that... Exactly. It... And if you're afraid, she's afraid. That's why she cried. Be brave, Daddy. Hold that baby. Yeah. Okay, daughter, did you hear that? Now I'm going to take you in your room and put you down and give you a great big bottle of security. <laughs> did you hear that? She said daddy. Daddy. Say it again. Say daddy. Say it again. Daddy. All she did was burp. Let him hear what he wants to. You're pretty smart, you know. Oh, yes, that's me. The wise old doc. Would you like some coffee? No, thanks. No, really. I've got to be going. That's right. I guess you do have other patients. Well, no. Not really. Oh? The fact that I am the wise old doc is one of the better kept secrets. Well, that's not fair. It may not be fair, but unfortunately, as they say, that's the way it is, baby. <laughs> oh, there's my transportation. Oh, goodbye. And thank you. And take care of that beautiful baby. We will. Thank you for stopping by. Betty Jo! What is it, darling? Did she burp again? Not this time. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for waiting. Mm. Is anything wrong? Mm. Are you sure? Mm. Is that all you can say? Mm hmm? Mm. Okay. You want to know why? Mm. It's the old freeze. Oh? I'm sorry, but that's what it is. It's the old freeze. Oh, I see. Well, then, if that's the case, I, um... I guess you better just get on up there and highball her. Yes, ma'am. Did you say highball her? Mm-hmm. That's a railroad expression. I know. My daddy was a hoghead. That means engineer. I know. Do you know anything about trains? Well, a little. For instance, I know that this locomotive of yours is a 460, built around 1891, with 56-inch uh, drivers and uh, 17 by 24 cylinders. A uh, boiler pressure of, say, uh, 160 pounds and 17, 18,000 pounds of tractive effort. Am I close? Almost right on the nose. Mm hmm. <laughs> would, would you like to ride with me up in the cab? Oh, yes, I'd love it. <laughs> oh, but what about the old freeze? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm the engineer here. I do what I want. <laughs> Oh, good afternoon. Hi. I'm Dr. Craig. We've met before. Yeah. Well, this is a self-service store. Help yourself to what you want. Well, actually, I, um, I didn't come in to buy anything. I just wanted to thank you for that nice article you wrote about my being associated with Dr. Stewart. You liked it? Oh, yes. And I very much appreciate your putting the item in the back of the paper. Oh, well, yeah, it was in the back of the paper, all right. So far back, I thought I was going to have to put out a P.S. Well, you couldn't have handled it any better. I couldn't? No, well, you see, most small-town newspapers would have taken a story like that, put it on the front page, and then made big headlines out of it. They would? But you, knowing that doctors shun publicity, treated it just right. Well, yeah. As editor-in-chief, you have to be up on all that stuff. How many are there on your staff? 
Yeah, uh, you mean count the editorial staff, the reporters, the sports department, the advertising manager, and the wire service personnel? Yes. One? Me. <laughs> you mean you put out this wonderful newspaper all by yourself? Uh, every word of it, from the weather report to the obituaries. It's unbelievable. Well, you're new here in the community. After you've been here a while, you... I got work to do. Well, you know, I think I'll buy another copy of this. I want to send it to a friend of mine on one of the big metropolitan dailies back east. You got a friend on one of those big papers? Mm-hmm. The managing editor. I want to show him that they don't have a corner on all the talent. <laughs> Gee, imagine my paper being read by one of those... <clears throat> you go ahead, you do whatever you want. It don't make any difference to me one way or the other. <laughs> You want to send an airmail special delivery, there are some stamps in a drawer. No, thanks. I uh, want to include a note. The old philosopher says... You mean you're also the old philosopher? I said I write every single word of it. The old philosopher says, don't let your dog days hound you by barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> you thought of that. <laughs> All by myself. <laughs> Read the next one. <laughs> Remember this pearl of wisdom from the great seashell of life. Clam up when you're steamed. <laughs> oh, you really are a philosopher. <laughs> well, they come to me just like that. The minute I think of one, I jot it down. Oh, I got a whole box full of them. Would you like to see them? Oh, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> well, make yourself comfortable. Oh, oh, your poor son. Oh, that's a shame. Well, th th that's all right. As an old philosopher says, don't cry over spilled paint. <laughs> Girls, I hate to tell you this, but you're a disgrace to the maternal order of hens of America. <laughs> don't like the truth, huh? <laughs> You see that light bulb? I put that light up there so you wouldn't know whether it's daytime or nighttime. That way you're supposed to lay eggs around the clock. Now lately you haven't been coming up to your quota because some wiseacre has been turning off the lights. Now, I'm not accusing you, Danes, but personally I don't think you're that smart. But I would like to find out who your accomplice is. I'll leave that on. In closing, I'd like to say this. If each and every one of you don't come up with six eggs by Saturday, we'll be enjoying you on Sunday, if you get what I mean. Now, what do you say to that? Oh, yeah? Well, I mean it. Okay, who's a smart aleck? Oh, so you're the culprit, you flea-bitten ponderos. Yeah, you better run. So this is where you are. I've been looking all over for you. Dinner's ready. Well, it's about time. You should have been at the table three minutes ago. Guess what, Uncle Joe? Dr. Craig cooked dinner tonight. Dr. Craig? I'll eat up at the Pixley Diner. Well, you can't do that. She went to a lot of trouble. That's all we need to have a doctor cooking for us. Oh, I don't know. She seemed to know what she was doing. I bet her coffee tastes like quinine. And the gravy like penicillin. Uncle Joe, don't be like that. She's a very nice lady. Yeah, well... Come on, don't be grumpy. I'm sure it'll be a very delicious meal. I'm not going to like it. Uncle Joe, at times you can be so... Well... Come on. Let's not think about that. Let's concentrate on the times when you're charming and debonair. And a real gentleman. Please, for my sake. <laughs> well, I think that's about everything. Here, you start it off. Dr. Craig made beef stroganoff, especially for you. Stroganoff? What's that, French for leftovers? <laughs> I do hope you like it. I'm a chicken and dumpling man myself. <laughs> Do you like it? Well, I can always fill up on bread. I wonder how Billy Joe's doing with her singing engagement. From the sound of her record that you played for me, I'd say she's knocking him dead. I hope so. Hey, Mott, get off of that furniture. I don't see the doll. I guess he crawled on the sofa. <laughs> Oh, does that look good? Deep dish out 
apple pie and homemade ice cream. Well, I hope you like it better than my stroganoff. I doubt it. Down through the years, I've been pretty spoiled. Uncle Joe. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the way it is. Well, if you don't want it, I do. <laughs> I thought you didn't want it. Just trying to keep you from being a hog. <laughs> habit of uh, reading in bed at night, and uh, so I just came down for a glass of milk. Uh, I, I was getting a glass of milk myself. <laughs> well, whenever I have a glass of milk, I always like to have something to wash down, not waste the milk. Too well, bad you couldn't have picked something that you like better, rather than my beef stroganoff and deep dish apple pie. <laughs> oh, hello, little fella. I'll tell you what, why don't we give him this? No, no. You can have some of that nice leftover meatloaf in the ice box. Well, the reason I don't want him to have it, uh, he's in training. Uh, he's too fat for his own good. Look at his bay window. Why don't you go and jog? And why don't I warm this up for you? Well, there's no need of that. But I want to. Now, my father told me... The man is king of the house. And the woman must wait on him. Now, I'll warm that stroganoff up. It'll be ready in just a few minutes. And then you can have this for dessert later. No, no. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to have this first, then the stroganoff. <laughs> She didn't fight fair. She hit me in my Achilles heel, my stomach. <laughs> okay, well, I don't see you. What's the matter? I'm going up, too. You are? Uh -huh. I thought you had a train to run. I thought you had a store to run. Well, it's before hours. And I'm ahead of schedule. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I suppose you're here to see Joe. Go right ahead. Oh, no, no, that's okay. You see him first. I don't want to see him. I... Oh, good morning, ma'am. Why, good morning, gentlemen. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, no. Uh, but she wants to see Joe. No, I don't. You do. I do not. <laughs> Well, you must be here for some reason. Well, it's this. Oh, the romance of the rails. The story of steam engines then and now. I knew you'd be fascinated. Oh, oh sure, nothing fascinates a beautiful woman like a book full of freight trains. <laughs> oh, but I am fascinated, Mr. Drucker. You see? Look. Right here in the front, the thrashing wheels of a 4-6-0. Oh. The thrashing wheels of a 4-6-0. Cry, I, Wendell. Uh, Janet, uh, uh, doctor, I've got to see you. Let's sit over there. Okay. After you left yesterday, I was really inspired. The old philosopher turned them out all night. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think of this one? <laughs> You can lead a horse to water, but an elephant has to pack his trunk. <laughs> How was that again? Wendell, just go peddle your book. Oh, yes, the book, Doctor. Look here. Casey Jones, old number 382. Oh, excellent. And here, do you know what that is? 
2666 Allegheny. Oh, the Chesapeake and Ohio. All right. Oh. Look at her. Big, powerful, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and here's another one right here. Uh, 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 see what you think of this one. The night has a thousand eyes, the day but one. But isn't that from the poem by Francis W. Bourdillon? Oh, you know that. Uh, well, I, uh, I agree with her. It's a he. Well, I have some others here. Look at this magnificent shot of the old William Mason crossing a trestle. Oh, my. Well, for crying out loud. Oh, oh, excuse me, would you please? I have something in the oven. What the heck's the matter with you guys? Is this what you call the old freeze? Uh, well, uh, Joel, uh, you gotta understand. A, a thing like this ain't easy. Yeah, she's too warm to freeze. Face it, she's got wild. Oh, boy. And after the three of us had made a pack, me and two spineless jellyfish. Okay. I'll carry on alone. When that great day arrives, we awaken in the morning and find there's no longer a lady doctor in the valley, you'll all come to me and say, what's that? Here you are, Joan. Those blueberry muffins I promised you last night. Oh, yeah. What's this? Oh, didn't he tell you? Oh, we had a lovely long talk late last night. Hey. Oh, my, yes. It must have been well after midnight, wasn't it, Joe? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. Oh, I do, Joe. You were putting on the old freeze. Yeah, you cracked even before we did. I did not. Well, doggone it, it's harder for me. I'm right here in the front lines. Yeah, man, after you fell, you had the nerve to try to chew us out. Yeah, the nerve. You got a lot of nerve, Joe. A lot of nerve. I was... Well, listen, I'm just as human as the next guy. I question that. Let's go, Wendell. I've had enough of him. So have I. Hmm. <laughs> well, I hope you're satisfied. You're the two best friends I got in the world. Oh, I'm sorry. I feel bad about that. But it'll probably work out for the best. What do you mean? Well, them being my two best friends, if they'd have stayed, I'd have to share your muffins with them. <laughs> Put on a little pot of coffee, will you? I'll call you. Raise you five. All right. I'll call that and raise you five. Call. What do you got? Deuces. How many? A pair. Beats me. <laughs> what do you know? Looks like the little lady's giving us a lesson. Beginner's luck. She doesn't look like a beginner to me. You know, I, I really want to thank you gentlemen for this. I just can't tell you how I appreciate it. Oh, yeah? Oh, I don't mean the winning. I mean your permitting me to sit in with you for accepting me. Come on, deal. Of course, I know I'm only just sitting in for Doc Stewart uh, just to fill in the game. We wouldn't have asked you if we didn't want you. Right, Sam? Oh, sure, right. We're crying out loud will somebody deal. Hello, Steve. Hi. Dr. Craig, I just got the word on my short wave that Grace Only's baby is sick again. Oh. Oh, that's the lady in Mercer Flat? Right. I can fly up there right away. All right, I I'll get my bag. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Will you cash me in? Pleasure. What about our game? Well, what about it? We're almost out of chips. She's too good for us. Ah, oh, baloney. I just been softening her up. Let her get overconfident. <laughs> Did a good job, Joe. Looks like you cleaned these fellas. Fifty tens, a hundred fives, and two hundred ones. Pay up, banker. Okay, here you are. Thirty-five cents. Thank you. <laughs> good night, gentlemen. Come on, Steve. Let's go. See you. Well, that's what happens when you got a woman in the game that grabs the money and runs. <laughs> but Joe, she's a doctor. She had to go. It would have been the same with old Doc Stewart. Oh no, it wouldn't. What would have been different? Old Doc Stewart always loses. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking. This woman, Dr. Bennis, ain't going to work out here in the valley. And it's up to us to do something about it. Now, the only way we can handle it is with the old freeze. That's the ticket. We won't even talk to her. If she talks to us, we'll... Oh, well. Cash me in, please. I don't have the right change. But next time you're in the store, I'll give you a stick of gum. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tonight, don't miss the Ed Sullivan Show with the Jacksons when they were the Jackson 5, the Rascals when they were the Young Rascals, and George Carlin before he had a beard. It's an entire hour with Ed Sullivan. Tonight, starting at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on TV Land. Now, stay tuned for the Sonny and Cher Show, next on TV Land.